Hey guys, what's up? It's you in here, and today I will be showing you how to make a water shader with Shader Graph in the Unity Lightweight Pipeline. So, uh, just in case you don't know how to set up the Lightweight Pipeline, you create a new Unity project like I have here on the latest version of Unity, and you jump onto Window, Package Manager, All let it load up for a second and scroll on down to the pipelines I'm going to use the lightweight one because it's better I think for mobiles or I think it's the only one that's compatible with mobiles so and I want my water shader, uh, shader to work wherever I need it to so let's install that now this always will take a moment because uh, for you, it may need to download it as well, but for me, it simply needs to import it. Now, the lightweight pipeline includes several things. Uh, the pipeline itself, uh, shader graph, as well as the pros, uh, processing post-processing stack. And though it's got limited functionality at the moment, the post-processing stack is still quite useful. And you can do some cool things with that. Now that the lightweight pipeline is installed, you shall click out, right click an asset, create rendering lightweight pipe an asset. I just call call it whatever you want. Uh, go to edit, render pipeline, or sorry, project settings, graphics, and then drag this in here for the render pipeline assets. There we go. Now you may, f may find if you've already got shaders installed that they won't work. Uh, most shaders can be fixed by going to edit, uh, render pipeline, and upgrade project materials to lightweight materials. It will fix most of them, but not all. So make sure that the materials and shaders that you already have installed are compatible. Anyway, let's go here create 3d object and create a plane now this will be our water so let's call it as such and now let's create our shader now we go to create shader and then we do PBR graph now this will create a shader graph file now if we want to create a material uh, the quickest way to do it is to right click on it, uh, create material, and it will create a material with the shader pre applied. We can drag that on to the water, and there we go. Now let's double click on the shader. Let me bring that into view for you. Okay, now that we have it, it up, uh, there are several things you need to take note of if you're completely new to uh, Shader Graph. Here is a rough preview of your shader. Uh, here is the, I guess I would call it the, the final node. This is what you put everything into. And um, here is all your properties of your shader. Now the first thing we need to do is change the color of the water. So let's uh, add a couple of color properties. Let's call this main color. And uh, let's expand this out so we can see it better. So uh, you can create a default color. I'm gonna go with something like that. And then let's create a secondary color. Now you will see what we'll be doing with this in a moment, but I like to make it slightly green, but choose throw. Okay, now that we've got this done, let's drag these colors out here. So the properties 
of the colors are here and this will give you their yeah RGBA code so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these into a Fresnel effect now that will mean that um, we will have our main color on the outside and our secondary color on the inside um, you'll see what that is in a moment and if you have no idea what I'm talking about then you'll also see in a moment but first let's create a position node now position nodes uh, give you your position in terms of a number of spaces world space view object and tangent what we want to do is keep this at world so let's scale this up like so second let's create the Fresno effect node and bring in the normal here nice and simple leave the power as it is and um, we'll create a new node called the power node now the reason why I'm doing this is because I find that I can get more fine-tuning if I apply the power on top of the power that's already been applied so let's drag this in and we will add ourselves a vector one which is essentially a float and we'll call this Fresno power uh, something to bear in mind is if you want to edit this in script that this is the reference for the property and you can change that if you feel like it since we're doing this completely in the material and stuff I'm not gonna touch that but let's give this a power of two as well by default and drag this in and connect it up so that means we can change this in the in the material so let's move this over try and keep this nice and tidy and let's create a lerp node and we will put the first color in and the second color in as well and use the fresno to drag it along uh, let me swap these around so the blue is outer and that the green is closer towards you and makes it look like that the closer you are to the water the deeper it is sort of it's also uh, gives a nice change in color effect so let's drag this up to the albedo okay nice let's save what we've done let me move this out of the way and now you can see that we've got a shader with a Fresno effect it's kind of harsh so what we could do is just power it down a bit and there we go this will disappear a bit uh, once we add uh, normals so now that we've got a weird looking washer at the moment uh, next thing we need to do is start to apply our normal now this is where I would argue is probably the most complex part of what we're going to be doing so uh, drag in a washer normal map you can find these online pretty pretty easily just google however you want or google washer normal map and it'll show up so let's add a texture here we go and we can set a default let's have it the normal map let's drag this in now if you want uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be layering these on top of each other so if you want to have two different normal map uh, normal maps layered on top of each other just add a second texture and you'll see what we're doing in a moment so let's put this here and let's create a node and let's call a sample texture 2d LOD it's kind of important for something that we'll be doing later on um, and let's drag that in 
Now, in Unity Shader Graph, in order to interact with two, uh, Texture 2Ds, you need to add a uh, sample uh, Texture 2D node. In this case, we've made it an LOD. So here we are. Now, um, let's create a node and let's lurk between them so that we can um, tile them on top of each other. And let's create a, another vector one. And let's call it um, tiling bias. Add this in here. I'm gonna make this 0 0.7 so it's um, more biased, I believe, to the the top one, but we'll find out in a second. And then we'll um, add this down to the normal map. So now that we've got this, we can um, go back here, or we can save it first so we can see how our uh, water is now looking with its new uh, normal map. Let's first select, let's add it in. And already you can see it looks a little bit better. The water, the greenness in the water, you can notice the closer you get in but merely looks like something yeah like you uh like you see it in water it's a, a dark green effect now uh this is kind of boring so what we're going to do is make the normal maps move and we'll also be uh, tiling them so that uh, one of them is smaller than the other so let's create a tiling an offset node and drag this into the UV part. Uh, let's create another one down here. I've just copied and pasted it there. And there we go. Now uh, we're going to need two more properties up here. We're, I know we're expanding this out, but we're going to call this uh, small wave tiling. I'm going to make this four by default and then I'm going to make one called large wave tiling and I'm going to make this one by default. So let's drag in here and the top can be the large wave for me and the bottom will be the small one. Now you'll see if we go over here that the noise is more layered and if we look on the preview here you can see for sure let's save the asset and click in and already you can see that it's a lot more uh, textured and looks a little bit more wave like